Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a CUDA worksheet tutorial on properties of kites. This was a special request from Thyra. Thank you so much for the request. If you have your own request for any particular content or worksheet, make sure to leave a comment below and tell me exactly what you need help with. So for this worksheet, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of walk through some of the properties of kites. Kites are these four-sided shapes, quadrilaterals, that have essentially two isosceles triangles attached together. So there's one isosceles triangle and the other one would be right here. What makes them isosceles is they have two equal sides. So you'll see that with kites, not all four sides are the same necessarily, but that they have two congruent sides that are adjacent. That means right next to each other. Usually we've been seeing shapes like parallelograms where the congruent sides are opposite from each other. That's not the case with kites. So that makes them a little bit special and it creates two isosceles triangles. So one of the properties we know about isosceles triangles as we're trying to find this question mark for number one is that if we split it up like this to make two triangles, so let's just go ahead and concentrate on this green one for now. This green triangle we know, there's my outline, a little bit better. We know that this angle plus these two angles needs to add up to 180 degrees. The other thing we know is if these two sides are congruent, then that means these two unknown angles are also congruent. So that's X and X. Okay, so that's something that we're gonna use. We know that X plus X plus that 96 is gonna be equal to 180. The other thing we know about uh, kites based on that information is that with this side and this side, we have two missing angles right here. And since if we split this up, this and this, those two angles, I'm talking about these ones and this one, and this one and this one are gonna be congruent. So what does that mean? It means that these two big angles, W and U, are gonna be equal. So this whole angle right here and that whole angle right there are equal. So we can re-modify our equation so that we have this question mark, or I'll call that angle U plus angle W plus 74 plus 96. What happens if you add all four angles in a quadrilateral? It equals 360. That's one of the angle properties. Now, we know that angle U and W are the same, though. So we could rewrite this. Okay, so I'll, let me go ahead and show that. I'm going to rewrite it. Copy. Paste. And I'm gonna change this to a variable. So I'm gonna just call this x instead. So I have x plus x plus 74 plus 96 equals 360, which becomes 2x plus 74 plus 96 equals 360. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna solve for x. So for this uh, CUDA worksheet tutorial, you need to know some algebra, which is solving for the unknown variable. I'm gonna simplify a little bit. I'm gonna do 74 plus 96 first. And that gives me 170. So 170 plus 2x equals 360. And then I'm going to subtract that from, three, uh, from 360 minus 170 from each side. Again, I'm trying to get the x by itself. And I get 190 equals 2x. And my final step is to undo the times 2 by dividing by, not 2x, sorry, that's a mistake, by dividing by 2 to both sides. So I have 190, that's a zero, divided by two, and that will give me 95. So X equals 95 degrees. And that means that that's 95 degrees, and also that is 90 degrees, or sorry, 95 degrees. And a way to check our answer is we could add up all four of those angles, and we could see if it makes 360, and it will, okay? So that's number one, that, that's kind of actually a harder problem than some of these other ones, but you're gonna use the same process for number two. Now that I have it down, I know that I can just call that X, that's X. Be careful though, because we need to make sure that if these two angles are given, that these two angles are definitely not the same. So uh, just to keep in mind, if you split this in two, you should have an isosceles triangle here, an isosceles triangle here. These two angles are gonna be different because they obviously look different and because they're part of two different isosceles triangles, whereas these ones are kind of shared. See how those are shared on those two triangles, the triangle here and triangle here? Those are the ones that are gonna be equal. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, that's very important so you don't make that mistake just adding when it's not 
a true uh, equation, not something that makes sense. All right, so this is 360. This is how you set it up. We know that all th four angles add up to 360. I'm just gonna do some condensing here. So I add these two together and I get 136 plus 2x equals 360. I solve by subtracting 136 from both sides and then dividing by two. So I get uh, 360 minus 136. I get 224 equals 2x and then divide by two and that will give me 112. 112 equals x. And that's my answer, okay? It's just looking for x. Um, this one's already divided for us, okay? This one's actually easier than it looks. So again, our isosceles triangle, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Here we go. So here's an isosceles triangle. Here's our other one, okay? Um, you'll see that this whole thing right here, there's our triangle, and it's got this line down the middle. So that's an angle bisector. And the reason why it's an angle bisector is because these two sides are equal. So that actually makes that 34 degrees also, okay? So that's a cool property of a kite. If you draw like, I guess you could see it as like the support. You know, if you have an actual kite that flies, you'd have like these little cross things. This is 90 degrees. That's one of the properties of kites. And then this would bisect this angle. So those two angles are equal and then these two angles are equal. So that's 34 degrees. So that's number three. Um, number four, don't assume that this is also, uh, wait, let's just double check this. Okay, yeah, so you gotta be careful here, um, just checking to see where the isosceles triangles are. You can always draw one, so draw down the middle and see if it makes an isosceles triangle, and it does. You can see that this and this are equal, so that means this is an angle bisector, that also has to be equal, okay? So this is 58 degrees too, but you just gotta be careful. Sometimes you don't wanna do this, okay? Where you draw this and you're, and you're thinking to yourself, whoops, you're thinking, oh, this has got to be an angle bisector. No, because these are not congruent angles, and that is not an isosceles triangle. So you just got to be careful. So this one is 58. All right. Uh, one of the last properties about kites, we have that congruent sides. Uh, <laughs> adjacent sides are congruent, except for the back side. Um, it's got two sets of congruent sides that are adjacent. So this is seven. Okay, they're the equal, and if this was 10, that would also be 10. And then over here, uh, since that's 12, this is gonna be 12. We know that ME, this one is 20, find MK. So that whole distance, don't just put 20 because you're going fast. Know that this and this are gonna be equal. There's our isosceles triangle. So the whole distance is gonna be equal to double that, 40, because that's 20 and that's 20. All right, this side is uh, the back side of this uh, worksheet is all about algebra. So we just need to do the same thing we did in the front, but with algebra now. So we're solving for x. We already know that this is isosceles and that's gonna be equal, a bisector. So we just set it equal to each other. Okay, we know this is equal to 50. That's a 50 degree angle, but we're trying to solve for x. So we just do some solving. So I subtract two, I get 48 equals eight x. I'm gonna get x to after I divide by eight equals six. And that's my answer. Over here, TB, nine, let's see, TB, that is nine, and we're trying to find, and we know that BV equals negative one plus X. Okay, again, here's our isosceles triangle. These are gonna be a mid-segment. Those are gonna be congruent segments right there. Set them equal. Nine equals negative one plus X, and we're gonna add one, and we get X equals 10. Okay, uh, this one, what I would do first with this one is just pretend this is the question mark and treat it like one of the first ones. So that's 115 plus 95 plus two, I'm gonna call it a different variable because I don't wanna confuse it with X, two Y equals um, 360. Remember how we did that in the beginning? You can rewind if you don't remember. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna solve for this like question mark because we know that these two angles are gonna be equal. And I'll show you what we do after that. It's pretty simple once we get there. So that's 210, whoops, forgot to change. So we get 210 plus two Y, or two question mark equals 360. And then I'm gonna subtract by 210, and I get 150. So we get 150 equals two Y, and then I divide by two. And this tells us that our missing angle is 75 degrees. So that's 75, and this is gonna be 75. Okay, but that doesn't help us quite yet, not all the way. 
because we need to solve. So I'm going to add 5, and I get 80 equals 8x. That means after we divide by 8, that x equals 10. And that's our answer. So just kind of like what we did before, just one extra step. This is showing that if we have congruent sides, we just do 2x plus 4 equals 18. Subtract 4, subtract 4. 14 equals 2x. Divide by 2, we got x equals 7. I guess I'm kind of just rolling through this. i almost all done, so I'm going to see if I can finish all of them. I don't want this video to be too long, but yeah, we'll see. So this one, uh, this is a good one because this has x on both sides. So we have 45x equals 46x minus 1. Those are congruent angles. You can see that we have our isosceles triangle right there. Um, when you have this situation, uh, usually I like mo moving... Um, the smaller x first, just, but just because there's more stuff on this side, I'm going to subtract 46x from both sides. I get negative 1x equals negative 1, and I'm just going to divide by negative 1, and I get x equals 1. I just need to solve for SRT, that's this one. They're honestly equal, doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do 46 times 1 minus 1, I get 45 degrees. So I know that one's degrees. I don't know what the units are over here, but they're going to be like centimeters or some distance measurement. Okay, same thing over here. We're going to set, um, okay, this one, you're going to be tempted to set these two equal to each other. Uh, and actually, you're right. You can set those two equal to each other. <laughs> I was going to say, if they're going to give you these two, you can't set them equal. But these two you can because you can see that the two isosceles are right here. So, um, yeah, you don't want to use the vertex of the, the isosceles. The vertex being the side that is... Uh, at the top of the two, where the two uh, congruent sides connect. Okay, you want to use the, the sides, okay, so um, to set them equal. But we can set these two equal, so we get 7x minus 4 equals 5x plus 20. Move the smaller x by subtracting it from both sides. We get 2x minus 4 equals 20. We're going to add 4, and we get 2x equals 24. We divide by 2, and we get x equals 12. We're not done. We have to plug it back in. I'm going to plug it into either one. doesn't matter because they're the same. Um, oh, I just realized we're trying to find measure of Z. Okay, but we need to know this anyway. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So we have 5 times 12 plus 20. So that is 60 plus 20. We get 80. Okay. Now that we have this, this is a, a more involved problem than I thought it was going to be. So we have 80, 80, and we know that 105 plus 80 plus 80 plus z equals 360. So I just have to do some quick algebra here, addition and subtraction, 105 plus 160. So this is 265, and that's equal to 360. So then we just subtract. Oops, I forgot to put my plus c in there, plus c. So I just subtract, and I get z minus 265. I get z equals 95 degrees. So we got it. Z equals 95 degrees. And last one, find KL. KL is this segment right here. This one's actually easier because we can just set them equal to each other because they're congruent. 2x minus 4. I subtract x. I get 3 equals x minus 4. And then I just add 4. I get x equals 7. Not done. I need to plug it back in. We're trying to find KL. It doesn't honestly matter because they're congruent, but we just do 7 plus 3. And we get KL equals 10 units. I should write units. All right, that's all there is to it. I guess I went through every question. I don't normally do that. Um, <laughs> but I guess I was feeling like we just need to be complete here. Thanks so much for watching this video. Again, leave a comment if you need help. That's what this channel is for. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on Wes Explains Best.